Kevin is the man with the hat and the metal detector. Oh, oh. Walking the land, he's a treasure collector. Oh, oh. Metal detecting and digging lots of holes, looking for anything that's old. New videos every week, so please subscribe. Oh, no, This morning I decided to get up quite early and catch the lowest tide and I went into the sea at finally with um, Mark's Excalibur 2, my new sand scoop um, and the chest waders. It's a lot harder than you think swinging in, in water but um, I couldn't find my first target in the water. I was there for ages and in the end it was getting deeper and deeper so I left it. So anyway I dug several holes. I did find some bits and pieces which was really good. That's what I found on the beach, in the water, and I've already lost a 5p which I found, but never mind, I don't know where that is. First target was a 2p, and that one is a Victoria Penny. Right, we've all met up for a quick dig. We're still waiting for Neil and Johnny P. No idea where they've got to, and Gary's brought his coin back with him again. Now, last time when I rubbed it second, I found something. In fact, I found more than something, two, didn't I? Two hammers. I found two hammers, and they found nothing. So he's brought it to see if it works again. So here we go. Let's have a look. Rub, rub. You haven't rubbed it, have you? No, I have not. And you've rubbed it so. first. You seem to think it's the second one who rubs it. A, I think it's the second one who rubs it. Because you've done it recently with somebody else? Yeah. Right, okay. Find up to do it. Oh, right, okay, off we go. <laughs> Can't wait. Come on, Neil, where are you? Neil and Johnny P have arrived. I can't detect at the moment. Something really silly happened. I put my coils on charge last night and it's happened before. Uh, do you tell me if you've got a dais, if it's ever happened to you? You put your charging clip on the dais coil and it discharges. So it's completely flat when you go and pick it up. I think this happened about four times now in three and a half years. So I've got two coils and both are flat. They're on charge, well hopefully they are. So I, at least I can see what the other guys are doing for a while. Sort of leather dress or ornamentation. Yeah. Yeah, nice pattern on it. Not very old, yeah. but lovely to find. Yeah. Medieval buckle. Yeah, lovely job. Still stuff coming up. Yep. Yeah. And the mystery object. Oh yes, I wonder if anybody will know what that was. We think it was silvered because it's had a silver solder down that seam. Slightly flared. That is, it is patterned. Yeah, patterned and flared. So, if you've got any ideas on that, let us know because we're a bit stumped on that one. First target today: a bullet. Got a doctor. Ah, three little Roman bronze. And in ten minutes, he says. Oh, he's in a little hot spot. Well done, Derek. Yeah. I think it's one big Neil's. That's in remarkable condition. Headphones have packed up. I'm assuming they've just run out of battery, so I'm just hanging my remote close to my ear so I can hear it. And I'm digging up rubbish now. God oh, blimey, nearly had a heart attack. I just thought I'd got a massive hammered. However, it's a beautiful button, it's done in perfect condition. Look at that, that's a nice one. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it might have been debased, but. It's difficult yeah. to tell. It's bronze, I think. Mm. Again, it's got that iron corrosion and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You've also got a brooch, haven't you? Yeah, I'll like literally one at first signals at Doug's. It's almost like a little. A little so that's at this top end. Jugging, down that edge, yeah. Uh, just as it starts to drop down, and then bushes are on that Lovely side. Job. Yeah. And then I think this is an old one. It's got uh, a radiate helmet on that one. Barber. Yeah, so they're definitely a radiate. So there we go, we've hit this field loads and we, it's only the morning, it's um, almost cake break time. Have we got enough to go around? Oh I don't know, there's, there's five of us and we thought we were going to run out of cakes. Mini <laughs> cake hole! Mini cake hole! I think we've got three cakes each. This is great. I'm going down the other end, I've got to leave those eating their cake. And it seems that... 
Neil and Johnny P having a conflab there over a hole. I wonder what they found. Looks like Gary's done it again. Ta da! What have you got? What have you got? Another one with a pin. Oh wow! Wow! That's amazing. Is that what they call a fantail? Yeah. Fantail Roman brooch. I wouldn't know. I've never found one. By golly, that is a good one. Funny that most lead figures I find have lost their arms. This one's lost his head. Looks like a drummer, doesn't it? Sitting on something. Now that's an old fashioned lock. I wonder where that came off. Hey, that one gave me a startle. Thought I'd got my first gold coin. But I know that's probably never gonna happen to me, so even that's exciting. Gary's best finds today. Some really star finds there. He started with the Jetton this morning and he's just finished with the Jetton. Silver Roman, two brooches. What a great day. All I've really had it's 1922 George V sixpence and the James the first half grope, but that'll do me. But I do wish I'd found that. I wonder if he's looking. You can see behind me here. This is a carrot field that I can't go on until February because that's when they're going to bring up the carrots. But I'd noticed there's just two little tracks between them. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go, no harm. And look what I found. Two hammers, including a tiny, tiny, about eight millimeters, maybe nine. Little Roman and that bent one. Not bad for an hour. Cool, nice little buckle. Love it. Well, what an hour that was. I'm glad I decided to come and have a look in the little track. I think I'll have to come back here. I can't wait until February when all these carrots come off. It's just giving it a new lease of life because it's a very deep crop. You should see the size of some of the bumming carrots. I mean, they're like, no exaggerating. I'll see if I can find you one. Um, a foot long minimum and I'm not going to take them up until February. My digging knife is 14 inches. Look at the size of that. Oh what a glorious day. It's fantastic. The, the silence is so beautiful. Anyway look, Collins joined me today all the way from Lowestoft. Hopton near sea or Hopton on sea and I've just dug my first target and it's an old penny. Now if I turn this around the right way you can see there look the male bust facing left. It's well and truly knackered it's very very thin so it's either George the second or the fourth but I can't tell which but it's the first coin. Well this has made my day. Oops. Look at that, it's a lovely spindle wall. I love spindle walls. That was a cracker. Nicely decorated, medieval. Medieval 1066 to 1500. For some strange reason, it's 1509 for coins, the medieval period. I don't know why that is, but that's what the PIS, the British Museum decided. So, did you know that? Educational this, isn't it? So medieval, 1066 to 1500, 1509 for coins. So I think what I'll perhaps do is take this home, get some copies of this, make a mold. I'll show you how I do the molding process. Also how I made the, um, the foam wire cutter, the hot wire cutter to make the molding box. And uh, the process of turning these out in lead or even pewter. Join me soon and I'll show you. Love it. Well, it's a bit windy again now, but I'll try and get a video of this. 
at last some evidence of Roman occupation on this land. <laughs> that weighs loads. I don't know. It must be a near neon three quarters of a kilo. It's heavy. There's still a bit of iron coming out the top, which was a suspension loop. So it's dome shaped, pure lead, Roman steel yard weight. That is monstrous. Oh, now I am happy with that. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed making it for you because the dynamics are different when you've got a bunch of friends with you and you can bounce off each other and just look at each other's finds and just see what magnificent stuff is still lying in one of those fields in particular. And it's been dug for at least 10 years by a club and I've been on it really hitting it hard with friends for three years. Sometimes you find nothing. But never a season goes by when it doesn't give you something. But that last dig was brilliant. So many good finds came out. And I'm going to be inviting more people to join me, I think, from 2018 as well. So you could be one of those people. You never know. That brings me to a point. I am going to be making some changes to the channel. And you've probably got an indication of that. Let me just reach over here. You've probably got an indication of that through some of the content in this video. For example, there's some copies of that spindle wall that I dug up. I've been casting those in pewter and in lead and it's low alpha medieval lead which I also dug up so it's genuine real old medieval lead and why would I do that? Because I can. Another reason I enjoy doing it and playing around with ideas there's a mold I make made I can show you how I did that how you can have a go at it as well it's not that difficult as long as you get organized I've also got some new tools behind me here because I want to have a go at some other things apart from just metal detecting. Now I have been playing around anyway for the last year with other things like wombling. Remember a video that came out recently where you saw the sand scoop on this video when I was in the sea? Um, I got that sand scoop from Evolution in North Yorkshire, 130 quid including postage, 100 pounds if you pick it up with a handle. Uh, and I got it for free. How? Because one of my other hobbies that I started this channel with is wombling. Wombling, I'm not going to answer any questions here. You need to see my playlist. Basically, it's picking up things that other people leave behind, discard. And they miss them because they don't realise there's a value to picking it up. And that gave me £100 in six days and I bought that sand scoop. And the reason why I want to do that is, one, because there are far too many YouTube channels based on metal detecting. Far too many. Um, it's just gone mad with everyone making YouTube videos about detecting. It must be boring for you all. In fact, people used to jump up and down with joy when they found um, a fantail brooch. They would get thousands of subscribers because someone's got a fantail brooch or a hoard of Roman coins like that 603. I streamed live live as they were being revealed in a field down south in England. So rare, they went back to 80 BC. Didn't get that many views, not many subscribers, because everybody's seen it all before, which is a shame. So I'm going to be adding just a little bit more content, a bit more different things every now and again into my channel to hopefully keep the interest up and to keep the dynamics alive. And, you know, apart from which, of course, it's something I want to do and hopefully you'll support me. Now, speaking of support, I am considering, considering removing the monetization from my channel. The reason why is because I only make £70 a month. It doesn't come to me. I give it to my cancer research charity. And I've realised from watching a lot of comments lately that people really are becoming desensitised about every Tom, Dick and Harry raising money for a charity. Now, if you're not aware, I've been raising money for cancer research for 10 years. And so far, I've got £42,000 out of the £50,000 target. Now, I'm going to continue doing that, but I'm not going to continue pushing it down your throat because I don't do that very often anyway. But I like to mention it every now and again because there are so many people who say to me, why don't you do something for charity? Do something worthwhile with your channel. Well, obviously, they haven't got a clue what they're talking about. And if they watched my videos, they would know what I've been doing for the last 10 years anyway. They're just like to say something. 
So if I do demonetize, I need other ways to find some support. So what I've now done is I've set up a Patreon page. My Patreons get treats like these posters free of charge. They get um, access to other content which nobody else gets on YouTube. Um, there's all sorts of various bits and pieces. You know, for example, I'm making coin rings. You know, silver coins I dig up detecting, I turn into rings. Gold plate them, 24 karat gold plate them, and boom, give them away to somebody. You know, so there's a lots of stuff I really do want to move on now in my channel in 2018. And I hope you want to come along with me for the ride. I'm going to do as much as I possibly can. It won't all be about detecting. And I really am considering whether I should demonetize my channel. So why not take a look at the last couple of videos I've done, which are making the hot wire foam cutter, which makes the box for me for um, casting the metal pewter and lead spindle walls and Roman coins and other things. Look at some of the videos about, you know, the silver rings, coin rings, bullets converted into key rings. Some of the stuff I've dug up, I've just turned into great stuff. Also, look at that Patreon page. And if you really do want to support me on there, I, you would be more than welcome. And I'll be glad to give you a few freebies for doing so. Right, so today is the first day of the rest of my life. And I am going to be introducing some of these changes already, right now. So, if you like anything you've seen, and you're looking forward to some more stuff that's coming up as well, simply like, share and comment. Most importantly, I invite you to subscribe and click that bell icon so that you can be notified whenever I load a new video. Steven is the man with the hat and the metal detector. Oh, oh. Walking the land, he's a treasure collector. Oh, oh. Metal detecting and digging lots of holes, looking for anything that's old. New videos every week, so please subscribe.